Hello, I'm Adam Grimes and welcome to Chart School. So really quickly here as we get started, you can find more of my work at my blog, which is adamhgrimes.com. You also can follow me on Twitter at Adam H. Grimes. So I want to do something a little bit different today. I want to go back and look at about a year of swing trading in crude. And these are trades that uh, I did in real time and published the analysis leading up to the trades in real time. So this is all on the record. You know, this is not uh, anything that I'm going back and recreating history. I want to show you the good and the bad. And the reason I'm doing this, there are three things I hope you get out of this. I want to give you a perspective on what professional trading looks like. I'll talk about that in a minute, but I want you to see both wins and losses. Uh, I want to talk about reading trend strength and trend integrity with simple patterns how we can find a balance between flexibility and consistency. consistency. And then I want to show you that even correct analysis, because I think most of the trades I'm going to show you, the analysis was spot on perfect, but it doesn't necessarily equal trading results. There's kind of another link there. And I hope to do all of this in just a few minutes. So let's get started. So first of all, when I started trading, I was really confused by a lot of the information I would see out there. There were people who seemed to, no matter what, they made money. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, you'll see somebody, they'll publish a long call on a stock, and you'll come back in a few days and the stock collapsed. It didn't even go up very much from where they said to buy it. And then you ask that person about it, and they said, oh yeah, I got out. And maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but I think there's a certain amount of shall we say, untruthfulness that goes into that. Um, because then when I connected with traders who were successful, I was shocked, frankly, to see how often people lost on what looked like good trades. And I really had to recalibrate. You know, if, if you just come from the online world, you have this idea that, uh, that there's some genius in trading, that traders don't lose. And real traders lose a lot. Now, there, of course, there are varying degrees of consistency. There are traders that have a 25% win ratio and the traders that have an 80% win ratio. And you can be kind of anywhere in the middle there. And I have, over time, by the way, you'll see evolved to be in the middle of that range. But just be aware that trading really is a mix of good and bad. So now let's talk about some market analysis. Okay, here's a weekly chart of crude oil. Just for context, what we are going to do in this video is focus on, I'm going to drill down to the daily chart and show you trades made over about the last year. So we're looking at, at this, but how do we get there? What's, what's the context? Because you know, I was trading this all along. Uh, well, we've been in a pretty extreme downtrend for several years. And you can see here on the weekly chart, you know, like all this simple pattern stuff works that bear flags broke down and then down here we had look this is different right i'm going to clear these lines so you can see uh pretty much every time we have a consolidation it rolls over to the downside here's the first time it's different and i did get this message in real time that it was probably not going to be such easy trading in a downtrend and you can also see look we're in the upper part of the keltner which we haven't been for a long time again i'll kind of keep my lines clear and you can also see the moving average and you know i don't think there's a whole lot of value moving averages like most people use it but you can definitely see that this confirms we're sideways here so we were in a range and then somewhere and i apologize i didn't go back and look at, at my notes. I don't know exactly where, but somewhere in here, I got the message that it uh, wouldn't have been there. Probably would have been more in here, the message that we were in an uptrend and my trading focus shifted to focusing on the uptrend. So that's kind of my, my big picture analysis. Let me see if I can squeeze a little more data on the chart so you can see uh, a little bit longer term. Now we're going back to 2011. So you see the range, you see the breakdown, another range, and at some point, um, I suppose, I think, we are in an uptrend. So that's my thinking. Okay, now, here are the trades. I'm just going to show you all of the trades rather than going through one by one. And I want you to notice, uh, you know, I could go bar by bar, but I, just, I want you to be able to see everything. So the first thing is, I do believe 
if I'm evaluating what I did well, I believe that my every single trade I made here was correct in terms of pattern recognition. So, you know, you can see there are many of these. Here is a classic pullback breakout entry here. Uh, here is a larger pullback entry. You can see there's the pullback and I will try to keep these charts pretty clean. Uh, here's really a classic pullback. Uh, here's another one. Now you may say, did you miss some trades? Was there a trade here? Keep in mind there's also a trade management aspect. If you already have on a position, you don't necessarily want to be loading up more risk. Uh, I believe that these trades, even though you can see they were losses, these were the correct spot to flip back to short, long, uh, this is a super aggressive short, but it's really a short ante. And you can see in the price structure, we'll, we'll talk about why in a minute. And then maybe this wasn't the greatest trade. You know, lo lo looking at this, I, this is a fresh trade. I remember why I made it, but it's maybe the one that's actually kind of the ugliest. So I think if I go back and look at this chart, every one of these trades is kind of a picture perfect and, and at least in terms of analysis. Uh, and I'm also pleased to see where I skipped trades, that I didn't try shorts in here, uh, that I didn't try because I don't trade like this. You know, you could have done some kind of break out of the triangle there. And I, I, I don't have any problem with missing trades like that. But even though, so I've just told you how genius the analysis was. Uh, look how many of these are losers. Let, let, let me just mark the losing trades. See that? Uh, there are quite a lot of losing trades, right? Um, and by the way, this sums to about 3.5 R. So a fairly profitable period of swing trading this with, with fairly limited risk, but a lot of losing trades. And if you go back and look at the losing trades, would you have thought, would you have thought that you could buy here and look, it went up and you basically scratched the trade. You didn't, didn't really lose money. Or here, this is, this is kind of an interesting series of trades here. Let's zoom in. Um, so this is a really kind of picture perfect buy of this breakout, but in tightening the stop aggressively, I was stopped out on this long shadow on this drop. Now, was that a mistake? I don't think so. Uh, you know, and that's always one of the things you want to think about when you, when, when something happens in your trading that's not really what you expected or, or what you wanted. Did you make a mistake or was it just simply a normal outcome? And in this case, I think it was that the stop was tightened correctly. Uh, the trade was still valid because this really could have collapsed, right? I mean, you certainly could have foreseen a uh, pretty significant sell off. And then I think this uh, second entry was correct. And we only made a little bit of money on that. Um, so that that's actually kind of a point to think about a lot. And this is why you need to journal and evaluate your trades and really don't focus too much on the outcomes because this was a losing trade. No, it's a scratch trade, but it was a losing trade and there was no mistake made. In fact, I don't think on any of these trades there were mistakes made. Perhaps in retrospect, this trade up here, you would say, well, maybe you shouldn't have entered at the highs. Uh, we could talk all kinds of reasons why, but you know, it's still probably a pretty valid entry. And then the switch here from a pattern perspective, here's, uh, this is a little bit of an ante. Now it's not a great ante, but this is uh, one of the patterns that I found to be most reliable, which is when you have a trending market kind of doing its trending thing, and then you have a sharp counter trend momentum. So that is this bar. And you can see on the Sigma spikes, it's big, but not huge. We, if we go back, it's one of the bigger down bars that year. So that's the setup for the ante. And then you have a little bounce 
which in this case was just two days. A lot of times, by the way, I miss these. Uh, you know, I'm expecting several days, and sometimes it'll break, and, and you don't you you don't have the position on, and that's okay. You know, I'm I'm comfortable with that. In this case, I was very aggressive entering just after two days, and then what you're playing for is essentially a measured move objective, meaning that this swing that evolves you expect to look something like this swing. And that's one of the few times that I would consider using a Fibonacci grid, um, not from the standpoint of using it how most people use it, but just to, if you take some kind of Fibonacci extension and you look at, I would call this probably the swing, and you just drop a 100% grid, that's going to give you, there's no magic to this. Uh, the, it works, but it works just because you're assessing the volatility of the market in terms of swing length. So our target for this trade was somewhere right here. That would have been a reasonable target based on a measured move. And you can see we didn't get there, which is why we ended up with a small scratch on the trade. And then another break, not, not, another breakdown later. So this, I hope this gives you kind of an interesting perspective. I hope it's something to think about. Uh, I hope you see how many of these trades look right. And in the process of trade management actually became losers or small losers. I hope you also see the losers are generally small. Um, you know, that's what we're trying to do. If the market will give us enough room, we like to take bigger profits out. And there are a handful of profits that are great. All these are in our multiples, which I assume you knew. Um, we're not really in the business of taking these very small plus one plus two wins. Sometimes it's all we have. But if that is all we have, more likely it's going to end up being a small loss. That, that, that is typically what we would expect. Um, also notice that in terms of reading trend integrity, so let's forget the, let's just focus on trade direction. Um, you can do this in real time. This is, this is not an example from a book. That's what, that's a, that's one reason I'm showing you this is because this is not something that I just chose to put in a book or, or write a blog post about. This is real stuff. And look, wouldn't you say that this is pretty much a continual uptrend? You really had very little reason to do much on the short side. Though, you know, in real time, we don't actually know that. But I do think the points where we started looking at shorts here were sparked by clean downward momentum, some elements of market structure, even though I have a pretty strong, quote, conviction that crude oil is now in a longer term uptrend. I don't actually know that. And there's always a chance that that uptrend will fail. So that's why I do retain the flexibility uh, of focusing on, on the short side sometimes, but also the points where we avoided getting chopped up on the short side. Uh, that's equally important too. Okay, so I will wrap that up here. Like I said, if you want to see more of my work, my blog, adamhgrimes.com. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Adam H. Grimes. And if you want to see my work in real time, check out my companies, marketlifetrading.com, talonadvisors.com. And I also launched a new podcast, which you can find from my blog. And you might check that out. That's, that's a lot of fun too. Okay, thank you very much.